Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Pageless Library. I am Bo Knight, and with me, as always, is Ryan Knight. And today, we will be talking about H.P. Lovecraft, The Complete Omnibus Collection, Volume 1, from, 19, oh, from yeah, 1917 to 1926. But before we even start talking about that, because I feel like we got to remind you guys about these every time, because nobody will email us, we got to talk about all, all the ways you can get a hold of us. So our email is at kotpl.pod at gmail.com. Our Twitter is at the Pages Library. YouTube, which Ryan works super hard on, is Knights of the Pages Library. The Facebook page is also available at Knights of the Pages Library. And you can check us out on Reddit at r slash kotpl. That's right. And happy Halloween, everyone. Oh, yeah, it is. It is spooky day. <laughs> that's for sure. It is. And I am at work. Oh, joy. <laughs> well, I mean, I feel like Halloween stops meaning anything when you're like 15, and then it means something again when you're like 21, because you can go out and party, and everybody's dressed up. But then like once you're like, I don't know, maybe like 29, it stops meaning something again. I don't know, I don't maybe know, they get to hang out candy, I don't know. I don't know, man, a guy I work with, he's like super into it, he builds like his own haunted house and stuff every year, so that Yeah, I mean, that, Halloween to me is a weird one to be like super into, I feel like. Well, and it's really weird to me because he does that, and he's really religious, but oh. Halloween is a very, oh. like, pagan thing, so I would think they would kind of clash. But Oh, yeah, they, I don't know. <laughs> they pick and choose, I guess. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so yeah, H.P. Lovecraft. Yeah, let's talk about some H.P. Lovecraft. So we specifically picked this one for Halloween because uh, if anybody who knows of H.P. Lovecraft, you know it's associated with like you know psychological horror and horror type stuff kind cosmic of in general horror. cosmic horror yeah he's like the yep. father of all of like the space horror really correct yeah cosmic horror you i think you hit the nail on the head on that one i think he is kind of considered the father of cosmic horror so um <clears throat> so we listened to this the this audiobook uh on audible um that's where we listen to you know most of our uh, audio magic. Um, I'm actually going to come back to this point, though, here in a little bit, um, because I have something a little more to say about that. Um, so, yeah, like Bo said, this is covering the uh, writings of H.P. Lovecraft from 1917 to 1926. This is only volume one of, I'm not sure how many, maybe three? Yeah, it is uh, three, yeah. Holy cow, that's a lot. Well, and this isn't even all technically all of Lovecraft's writings. This is just like his published work, right? Yeah, and that's crazy because I'd really like to listen to like a uh, biography of him. Probably, I think that'd be kind of neat. Yeah, um, I mean, his he's super interesting to me. It's just weird because even in this, well, I'll, I'll get into it after we talk about some spoiler stuff. Um, this, so this was let's see, published in 2016. Yeah. By the narrator, Finn J.D. John. And he's also the person that compiled all these stories together. Right. And he also does, like, little, like, I don't, I don't know what to call him. Like, if it was a movie, it would be, like, a little vignette thing. Right. Or it's, like, an interlude. He kind of, like, tells you, like, where, where Lovecraft was at in his life when he was writing this. Right. And at the like beginning of, like, each year. Yeah. Yeah, because it tells you yeah. like what year. So it'll say like, you know, 1917. And then he gives you a little snippet of like what was going on in H.P. Lovecraft's life at the time while he was writing these stories yeah. that he wrote in 1917. Yeah. Um, so so yeah. like we were saying to the um, the author, H.P. Lovecraft is basically most well known for his like, quote unquote, Cthulhu mythos. Yeah, he um, the Call of Cthulhu, which is is included in this omnibus, um, is I would say arguably his most famous work. I think if yeah, anybody, it is. Yeah, if anybody has heard of H.P. Lovecraft, it's because they've heard of Cthulhu or the yeah. Necronomicon. Yeah. <clears throat> but um, so 
this collection, I mean, I would say that that's basically what it's based around is Lovecraft's writing is very much so like, well, like Bo said, it's, it is the cosmic horror genre. However, there's a lot of it that's just horror in general, I would say. Right. And this is a, like, this one is kind of a lot of his early work. Right. Like his first published writings and stuff like that. And I mean, I mean it, it, there is cosmic horror stuff in it, but it's not, I would say most of the stories aren't about that. Yeah, a lot of his earlier stuff was not about that. And the the narrator actually talks about that. Like he's kind of in his earlier stuff, he's kind of finding his kind of groove, basically. Yeah. So, you know, that's kind of what he's trying to do in a lot of his early work. Um, the, the just looking at the I real quick looked at the volume two and volume two includes a lot more of his uh, <clears throat> cosmic stuff, uh, the color out of space the Dunwich Horror at the Mountains of Madness. And so those are heavily cosmic horror stuff. And I think it all pretty much culminated with him writing um, The Call of Cthulhu, which kicked off that whole genre that he kind of went down. Um, And we'll get into that a little bit more, I think, after we uh, break our spoiler wall, talk about, you know, what we kind of think about that. So this, you can get it on Audible right now for twenty nine ninety five, or you can get it if you were to sign up right now. You could get it with one of your tokens or like however you want to do it. Really, I mean, it's not it's it's twenty three hours long, so it's pretty it's long. Very, yeah, it's very long. So I'm, I mean, if you if you're just looking at price for hours, it's 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 definitely one of the ones that's more up there, I think. And true. Sure. So it like it, is it easy listening? No, absolutely not. Hard no. Yeah, very very hard no. Um, and I say that, and I listen to almost all of my stuff while I drive, and for some reason, I found myself literally not hearing a word that was being said and thinking about other stuff. And if you do that, if you if your mind wanders for even like two sentences you're lost in the story, most likely. Well, part of the issue, I think, is the narrator is not a narrator by trade, and it definitely shows. Yes. In my opinion. No, in mine, too. And um, he, I think he tries. He does try. His voice is just very monotone, and there's not a lot of inflection in it, no matter what's happening. Now, Some of this is not his fault because a lot of these stories are simply told from the first person and basically is from the person kind of talking to themselves. So there's not there's not a lot of characters to voice. However, (laughs) um, this is actually what I was going to bring up is so the first time I listened to The Call of Cthulhu, I believe it was it was actually on YouTube. Yeah, me too. I think it was the. um uh, like Chilling Tales for Dark Nights or something yeah, like that. Yeah, that's exactly and, uh, what I listened to. Yeah, and so that was way better. Um, I agree. It was much more like engaging and like it was. I actually like found myself like, oh man, what's gonna happen next? Whereas like with this omnibus, and eh, just like I said, I, my my mind was just like wandering most of the time. So you want to? Uh, I, th- I think let's get into our our recommendations right now. Okay. Do you want to go first? Or do you want me to go first? No, you go ahead. So I don't th- like if you are just a casual listener who just like listens to audiobooks in their free time. I cannot recommend this for you at all. No. But if if you are personally like interested in cosmic horror and like kind of want to see like where the seeds of all of those things started. Because there's there's a lot of there's a lot of things now that exist that owe a lot to Lovecraft, mm-hmm. and I I think if you if you really find those things interesting and are and a, and a true fan of like like horror and writing, and like really like a, like a real true like a true fan of writing, then I think this is like this would be something that you would want to check out. Like I think especially if you if you were like an aspiring writer yourself, like this would be a this is a good thing to kind of kind of look at. Because you you kind of get an, like an 
especially if you, I think if you listen to all three, you kind of get like an overarching, like you can see Lovecraft in his like writing infancy and like kind of how, how, how much stronger of a writer he becomes over time. Right. And then I, like, I think that would be, that would be a good way to approach this, but I know me and Ryan both kind of struggled with this one. Like it was, it, it was it was long, and I I personally didn't I didn't finish it. I, I it was I didn't finish it either. I we have even gave ourselves before. extra time. Yes, and I have finished this before, but I did not finish it this time. And I was trying this time, like to pay attention, and I just like, I don't, every to, to me there are just there are a lot of like stories that I had zero interest in. Right, and, and it might that I mean. I don't know this, yeah, John, or what's his name, Finn, J.D. John. I don't know this guy, but I I would actually go ahead and say that I think some of that is his fault, because the way the story is told is pretty boring. Like, I mean, it, it there's literally no inflection in his voice, hardly at all. Mm-mm. I it, mean, and that's you would think if it's even if it is from the first person of somebody, most of the time in a lot of the stories, they're like frantic. Yeah. You you think he could put a little bit of that in there, but there's nothing. It's well, just monotone. Love, Lovecraft's like portrayal of the main character being insane is is incredible, honestly. Like I think like his his writing like from like an insane person's perspective is amazing. Right. But you don't get any of that like like frantic scribbling that like the person must have been doing to write this exactly. in in the scenario in the narrator's voice like and and when something like spooky is happening you know like he doesn't he doesn't really like build up like any an- anticipation or anything you know he just he's just reading it like he would be reading it aloud to his children or something like and he's not he's not really like putting any personality behind any of it at all mm-hmm. and I, I just feel like he doesn't do Lovecraft a lot of service because, like, Lovecraft stuff kind of oozes personality. Like, yeah. the writing itself has a lot of, like, kind of, like, f- like I don't know, like, flowery, like, fluff to it. I, I mean, I think you said this in the Roundtable episode. Like, mostly what he's writing is poetry. It is poetry. And I think, for me personally, that's what makes it very hard to follow. It it, it does. Because I'm not going to lie. <sighs> you know... A third of the words go right over my head. Yeah, and a lot of the time he's saying something like, "I don't know what that means." Exactly. And I mean, part and of which that pulls me out. That pulls time. me out of the story, though. I mean, that yeah. pulls me out. Part of that, I think, is the time that it was written. Mm-hmm. But I think a lot of that too has to do with, as and if you listen to this, you know a little bit. Like Lovecraft had a lot of ego, and he was trying to show that he was like a very knowledgeable person. Right. And. And like he's like a lot of like even the guy I'll talk about it like a lot of a lot of his writings was like him flexing and like showing what exactly what he could do, right? Even so, though he yeah. wasn't he wasn't technically like famous for writing no, back in really. the day. No. And I, he probably wasn't even famous. I would say until like like now, because like I didn't really I was hear about say, him yeah. in school or anything. Right. I would say it's it's definitely like uh, posthumously. Well, I'm. Like what brought Cthulhu to my attention was like Bloodborne, because that's like heavily yeah. Cthulhu inspired, and I I wanted to know where all that came from, right? Like what the source material was. Like I I, I don't know about you, but like that's what got me interested in, kind of the Cthulhu mythos, mythos and like cosmic horror in general. Right, that. and I think we I think we started talking about it around the same time yeah. for that reason because we were trying we were playing Bloodborne at the same time, wanted to kind of find out what the inspiration behind all that was, and then we started digging deeper into that so yeah so uh, yeah why don't you give your recommendation then <laughs> no i think i mean i think you pretty much no yeah you agree with what i well. said uh, okay yeah i definitely do i this is not a um uh this is not an easy listen by any means um this is for this is for people who are um like you said they're looking for this exact material um right it's very poetic, like I said. Uh, the words are almost dramatic to a fault because, yeah, like he, his, I mean, and, and anybody who's like a writer would probably be jealous of how well he can describe things. 
Right. That's, me, I feel like that's why I said that too. Yeah. It's like to me as a filthy casual, I, <laughs> I don't know what a lot of these words mean. I, I really, I don't. I mean, I kind of get the gist, but but when like, you're using like such huge poetic words to describe one thing, and again, I think this unfortunately falls back on the narrator. He he's not putting any any emotion into it therefore i'm not feeling any emotion when these just long words are being said to me well so. and I, I think an issue with it too is like some of the things he'll describe what's happening in one sentence right and so and he in like like the main descriptor is one of the big words that you don't really understand what it means so it kind of makes it hard to like infer exactly what's happening yeah yeah and that's kind of how it was for me too plus like I said, I would find myself one of those sentences would be long enough with so many big, you know, descriptive words that I would just zone out. I'm like, I, and then then I come back into the story and I'm like, OK, now I don't know who these people are. I don't know who he's talking to. Yeah. I don't know where he's at. Mm -hmm. So it yeah. just lost. Me. It lost me too many times for me to give a full recommendation of this unless someone is like like you said an aspiring writer or is very into writing and you know the different aspects of writing this might be good for even someone not interested in the genre just to kind of see a different uh perspective on like how things could be written so but i really i really can't recommend this one i mean it's long and I would say if you're going to pick this one up, do yourself a favor and like maybe uh, Google what uh, Lovecraft's more popular stories are and either listen just to those or like I kind of said earlier, there are actually better places to listen to these stories, I think, than this book. Yeah, and I almost think this would probably be better digested if you like came at it like one – short story at a time oh yeah because the ends of the stories well and this is partially the narrator's fault literally the end of the story it, it sounds like it's almost in the middle of a sentence and then the next story starts and i'm like yeah i'm like wait a minute what yeah it, and, it, and then like a lot of the time i was like oh is this just continuing what he was talking about before right exactly yeah and so yeah so yeah I mean, if you got the gumption, then this is for you. Yeah, there's, there you go. That's about the biggest word we know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, I mean, we, so, we can get into the spoilers, but I don't really want to talk about any specific stories. No, I think we're just, uh, let's just, we'll break the spoiler wall. So we're going to, we're just going to talk a little bit about the book in general, but this is just fair warning. We might, you know, spoil some stuff if you do want to listen to it. So if you do. Please go listen to it, and then you have to come back and listen to what we had to say about it. And so, some of the most interesting stuff in the book to to me is kind of is like the the overview of what hap what was happening in Lovecraft's life. Yeah, like I, I I really liked those a lot. That's about the only part the narrator should have read. The yeah, rest of exactly. Blessed up to a professional. Like, yeah. dude, if you had somebody like I don't know Bronson Pinchot or somebody reading uh, this, yeah, it would be. Yeah. And I. I get it, and I, you know, I don't know what goes into this as a narrator, but even when it's read from first person, you would think, like you said, these are frantic things. So, is somebody he should be able to put a little bit of inflection that the person who is seeing something that's terrifying, you know, he there should be some inflection to that. Well, and I think. Like this is actually like a, like uh, I'm but the the fact that we just did The Shining, like because that was read so well, mm -hmm. like the the narrator does That's such true. a good job of like of of showing insanity and like people kind of losing it losing a grip and like and he and he did a really good job of like the, those frantic moments, like mm -hmm. those the things that are happening and like and like characters you know like trying to get a bunch of words out all at once. Like, like, you know, you kind of like in a, like in a real conversation where like words are kind of just spilling out of you really fast. Right. And he does that really well. And like this, this narrator is just not, it's just, it was, 
I, I'm sure he did it all. He just wanted to do it all himself because he's obviously a Lovecraft fan, and I understand that. But it's just he. It was not a good choice to do it all himself. I think. I I don't really think so either, especially with this many stories. It actually might have been a better choice to get a more people. For each one. Yeah, or at least more people involved, or or something. I because I'm pretty sure I'll have to find it, but. I'm pretty sure the one I listened to was by Chilling Tales for Dark Nights, and that was very well done. Like, kept my attention very well. Yeah. I I remember listening to that and, like, literally could not – like, I, I was like, oh, my God, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Right. And I never really got those vibes from any of the stories in this. No, and I <sighs> – I didn't either, and that's what's sad is even on the stories that I that I knew and that I liked already, like that, I, I know that I liked The Call of Cthulhu. I know that I, there was, um, let's see, The Music of Eric Zahn. I like that one. Yeah, that one's um, pretty cool. I like The Doom That Came to Sarnath. I like that. What's the one where they're like uh, on a, they're like a, a German U-boat? Yes, yes, that one, and I cannot remember the name of it either now. And um, that is, that's his first, like, kind of foray into the cosmic horror. Like, that's the first one. Right, and I did, I really liked that one, too. And that, I that one is real good. Like, that one, that one, like, when I started listening to it, I was, like, finding myself smiling. I'm like, oh, man, this one's actually really good. Yeah, that one was good, too. And that was one, though, still, I think if it was narrated better, it would have been even more interesting. Yeah, it, it would have been better like because like the part where they like that guy like went overboard and then they like see him swim away like i didn't really understand what happened right like i had to re-listen to it a couple times just so like i was like i didn't really get it because just like the way because because they like mention it and then they move on and they don't they didn't like dwell on it enough like i don't know and maybe i'm just a dummy over here and i don't understand nothing well and a lot of that kind of is how it kind of feels to me um yeah so and then there's another one I can't remember the name of it now, but the story where the main character is the monster. Oh, the, I don't think I listened to that one. Uh, no, you had to have. It's relatively early on in this. You know which one I'm talking about? Where he like he he's looking in the windows and he's seeing oh. what he's describing as monsters, but then when and they all run from him. But then when he gets inside, he looks in the mirror and he realizes he is the monster. Dude, that one was great. I like that a lot. I'm trying to remember. I don't really remember that one. I can't remember the name of it now, but it is good. Yeah. I, I, there are definitely gems in here. It's just the, the narrator is just like such a big wall, I feel like, that makes it really hard to get over. For most so, of this, Chilling Tales for Dark Nights does do uh, the Call yeah, of Cthulhu. Yeah, they, they do Call of Cthulhu. Yeah, I pulled it up too. And it's done by Jesse Cornett. And I'm pretty sure this is the first one that I listened to. They also do the Dunwich Horror. And another thing they do with their, um, their reiterations of stories is it's not necessarily, they do dramatizations, but even with this, uh, the Call of Cthulhu, there is subtle background music and subtle things to build a little more tension and that is what this story needs that that is the thing that this story needs because it's supposed to be a very tense story you're supposed to be wondering you know what on earth is going on so i just think that's a better place actually to listen to it which yeah so far this is the first time that i have said that because normally uh, anything I get from Audible is perfectly fine. So, I mean, this is the first time I would say I don't actually. I would I would choose to listen to some of these stories somewhere else, basically. Yeah, yeah, I I would agree. I th- I think yeah, like especially if you are just interested in like the horror aspect of it all, like I don't think this is the best way to be scared <laughs> of this stuff. <laughs> Um, and a lot of this too is disappointing for me because I, I, like I said, the stories of this that I've 
heard and delved into Call of Cthulhu, um, a few others, you know, uh, the Mountains of, of Madness, uh, the Shadow over Innsmouth. Those I like those stories, and those are awesome stories. So this this book to me is just a big letdown because yeah. Lovecraft he literally inspired a genre without even knowing it. Yeah, he I really mean, did. you know, he that's why it's called the Cthulhu Mythos. I mean, he started all that. He really so, did. He, like, yeah. I just don't think that this book. And it is just a standard book, too. So maybe someone who goes and reads it themselves would have a far different experience than I had having it read to me. Um, I just think this is very underwhelming, in my opinion. I agree with all of that. Um, I'm trying to think if I have anything else. I mean, this, this Lovecraft 2 inspires, in a way, a lot of guys like... Um, Oh, now I'm going to look like an idiot because I can't think of his name. Uh, Del Toro. Oh, yeah. Guillermo, Guillermo Del Toro. Um, and in a couple of movies, like right off the top of my head, like in Hellboy, the yeah. Samuel, Samuel character is like exactly what I would kind of picture as a Lovecraft-style yeah. monster. You know, so you have you have people nowadays creating amazing things using Lovecraft as inspiration. And I know there is a documentary out um, on YouTube as well um, that has some stuff that they, they kind of interview um, Del Toro and he talks about his inspiration from it. And I mean, that's, that is what's so cool and what draws me to Lovecraft. And so, like I said, this, this, fiasco is just a big letdown to me uh yeah i agree because i i really like that this guy this finn jd john compiled all these stories into one book well three books uh or more i guess i don't really even know but it it's just 23 hours well, almost pretty much 24 hours that's a long time to hold somebody's attention. Yeah, it is. So if you're if you're gonna try to do it, you better be ready to do it. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I think actually we are kind of uh, going against the grain here because just looking on like Audible, um, a lot of people actually give this really good uh, reviews. Yeah, they do. I was looking at that too. But all the reviews that I see are that the narrator is just pretty poor so yeah. yeah i mean the content is good it's just the way it's delivered is just not good exactly see and then because like listening to the call of cthulhu uh in this one and then versus going and listening to it on like uh the chilling tales for dark nights youtube page um i guarantee i could listen to <clears throat> it in this book in the omnibus and absolutely lose track of what's happening. Yeah. Whereas when I listened to it for the first time, even um, through the Chilling Tales for Dark Nights one, I pretty much understood the whole story. I yeah. mean, there's parts there's parts that are very confusing because Lovecraft is a very extremely deep writer, but I got the general gist of the story the first time I listened to it. You know, with their narration. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so I don't know how much more can we beat this cosmically dead yeah, horse. I don't know. That's not, see. That's, that's what I'm trying. I was like, I'm, I don't. Yeah. I mean, I don't want anyone to shy away from Lovecraft. That's no. I don't want that. I don't. I, I don't just, think you I think should. You said it very well. That I think that that's a good way to say it. That these stories would be much easier digested one at a time, yeah. and you know, at that pace. Take take the stories one at a time. You know, or read them for yourself, but digest them slowly. Because if you try to do the omnibus, it's basically like, you know, um, trying to drink from a fire hydrant. Like, that's yeah. basically what it is. You're just getting so much overwhelming things coming at you. Yeah. 
And yeah, I, I totally agree. It yeah, it's just it's I this is just not the best. I, I then this is not the way I think Lovecraft was intended to be enjoyed either. So right. Yeah. Yeah, and that's yeah. And I, I mean, I, I mean, think all of the the like the the history about Lovecraft is is gold. Like I love that those parts. I like that a lot. Yeah. Because, like, knowing where his headspace was when he was writing some of these things is really interesting. Right, and that's why I said, too, I'd actually be kind of interested in uh, listening to, like, the biography for him. Yeah. Because that's, like, that's the part that really interests me is who he was as a person to come up with this kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, I, 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 I don't know if we should even bring this up, but, like, like the for the time he wasn't i think he was like just as racist as everybody else yeah and that's that's uh, a big question is it was he racist on his own or was it a product of the time and i think just from a couple of little snippets that the narrator gives <clears throat> that he might it might just be a product of his time because the way he kind of express, expressed himself is it was in one of the years the narrator kind of explains it when he moved to New York and he hated it because of how busy it was and all these things. And in a couple of his stories, it almost came out as super racist because he's talking about being surrounded by all these ethnic people and all this stuff. And that's like a, an ongoing thing, like a theme in those couple stories. But I guess from one of the one of the biographies written for him, they literally said it wouldn't have mattered if he saw like a Chinaman fall and hurt himself. Lovecraft would have still ran over and treated him like anybody else. Yeah. Like, so I don't think he was inherently like racist. Plus, no, I, no, I the don't name, think so either. The naming of his cat, that is literally, I think... Uh, <sighs> I don't know. I don't know how to how to put that in here without like I I don't think it was meant to be like a racist thing. Obviously it was a, you know, he his cat's name is the N-word, but yeah. it, I don't think it, he was saying it as like a racist thing. I just I I don't know. I think that's just a product of the He time. was just he was just being a freaking like punk rock guy about it, I think. And <laughs> he was just trying to like shock people. Right. And uh, it's just kind of what he was. Like he was an outsider for most of his life. And I think he kind of like liked the fact that he wasn't like part of the mainstream. Well, I get the sense that he was pretty weird. Like, oh, super weird, dude. Really weird, dude. So, I mean, basically like a shut in. And that's yeah. why I said, too, I don't think he was a lot of these shorter stories that he wrote and stuff pretty much got published in like little magazines yeah. or, you know, newspaper type things. None of this stuff like blew up for him. Not like, really. You know what I mean? None of it made him like incredibly famous at the time. I mean, he's by far more famous now than he was when he was alive. Well, and I, I like the little detail, too, that, like, sometimes, like, because he sent so many letters to his wife that he would, like, not eat so he could afford to send them. Yeah. Because he wasn't really that making that much money. Some of those some of those letters were 50 pages long. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you he's know. He's, like, sending little books. Exactly. That's exactly what I thought, too. I was like, well, yeah, he's basically writing novels, so... I mean, and you can tell that he wrote a lot. Like he was just a, he wrote a lot. Like that's probably what he did for fun was write. I mean, that's just what he did exactly was right. So, <clears throat> well, I don't know. It's kind of a letdown on this, you know, spookiest of nights. But um, again, I don't want anyone to shy away from Lovecraft. Just maybe shy away from this. Yeah. Um, this collection of them. <laughs> Yeah. If Again, you if you're enjoy Lovecraft, I think this is not the way. Right, and I I, th I would agree with that too. You know, I think we uh, shout out to Chilling Tales for Dark Nights over there because they. Uh, yeah. I really I I do like their stuff. They have a podcast where they just do kind of they, 
people write in stories and they read them and they do a very good job. This stuff is very high quality audio and stuff like that. So, I mean, shout out to those guys for uh, pretty much introducing me to Call of Cthulhu. So Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And definitely check them out if you ever want to be sp- spooked. It's good stuff. Yeah. This is a great night to mention them on, you know, because people could go listen to that stuff if they want to be scared tonight. Yeah, you'd be scared. I'll scared. Oh, and that that um, documentary type thing I was talking about is actually called Lovecraft Fear of the Unknown. Um, it is on Snag Films YouTube page. That's also an awesome documentary. Like, but it's like a I, documentary in quotes, but it's it's pretty good. I did like that too. I haven't actually seen it. That one's it's pretty good. It uh it gives a lot of insight into Lovecraft as a person, which was you know. Like we said, actually, kind of what we like about him. Yeah, I agree. So yeah, I don't know. You think you got it all out there? Yeah. Did we did we beat this cosmic horse enough? I, I guess I feel like I was just I feel like I was too rough on it, but <laughs> I don't know. I feel like you were fair. I mean, just give my honest opinion because I, you know. I don't know. I feel like I couldn't even throw any real like funny stuff into it, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. So what are we going to do next time? Uh, that's a great question. Um, what are we going to do next time? I already closed my other page, so I don't know. <laughs> so we're going to do the butterfly effect. Oh, yeah. And then we have another Audible original choice. So I don't really know what we want to do about that. Yeah, we're still trying to get it so people can choose. So what we'll try to do is on the next episode after the butterfly effect, we need to make sure we, um, because actually the new Audible Originals should come out tomorrow for November, right? Oh yeah, first, you're right. First Friday, yeah. So Friday the first should be the new Audible Originals. Either way, we'll try to talk about them in the next episode. And you guys can email us or, you know, just get a hold of us and let us know which one you want to. Yeah. Which one you could give us your top two. Yeah, that's that's a good way to do it. Yeah. So we could get top two and, you know, whichever two get the most votes. Those are the ones we will pick. Yep. Okay then. Um, Anything else? Wrapping up thoughts. Uh, Yeah. For anyone who missed the, um, the round table chat we had. Go check that out because we're going to yeah. try to, you know, maybe try to incorporate those a little more so you guys could let us know your thoughts on those. Yeah, and if you wanted to ask us questions or anything like that, feel free. Again, our email is kotpl.pod at gmail.com. Please send us your emails, your hate mail. I want it, please. <laughs> um, and again, thank you to anybody who's listening. Um, yeah. Just seriously, thank you guys. Like, it's awesome to see that we're getting any views at all. I mean, that's that's really cool. So yeah, and yeah, we appreciate it is, that. It is super. Me and Ryan are having fun. So if you guys are having fun too, that makes us extra happy. Yeah. All right then. I think that will about do it. I so, think that'll do it for me. Yeah. So we'll catch you guys in the next one. <laughs>